divorced Redditors, what was it that finally made you or your spouse end the marriage? Serious. Story 1. My ex and I got married very young. I was 15 and he was 17. We were together for 11 years and loved each other. But we realized that we would not let each other grow up. Staying a teenager forever is not an option when you have kids. Five years have passed and we still care about each other. We've both moved on. He's a great dad. He and his fiance are the godparents of my youngest son, and they will be giving birth to my goddaughter in January. Story 2. I will never forget it as long as I live. Our marriage had been on autopilot for a while, and one night we finally had a brutally honest conversation argument. She asked me, what do you want from me? I said, I just want you to be with me the way I want to be with you. That's when I realized that our marriage was over. She said, well, that's just not going to happen. This memory is very painful for me, even now, after we have been separated for many years and I am married with a beautiful child. I still cry sometimes thinking about my ex. It still hurts. Story 3. It wasn't about cheating three years after our wedding, or even about the 60000 in debt she had racked up. The last straw for me was when she pushed our oldest daughter's head through the drywall in a manic rage. I was carrying my older daughter, four days short of four, on my shoulder with one arm while pushing my little one, then six months old, in a stroller. And after three blocks, I swore to myself it was over. And it was. Story four. It took me years to finally get to the point where I was done. The last straw was the night when he drunkenly screamed at me for hours, at least five hours. He then growled bad music for another hour or so before finally passing out. He had done this several times in the past, but this time it broke me. I cried most of the next day. This terrible cry. I had a job and after six months I left. It's been four years. I don't regret it for a minute. Story five. He became a completely different person after we got married. He became very controlling and manipulative. I was expected to do all the housework and cook dinner every night. This after an extremely stressful 40-hour week job. He emotionally and verbally abused me. I constantly thought that I was cheating on him. If I always had anything but a smile on my face, I was ridiculed. Everything that happened was always my fault. He was never wrong. He was always the victim. I didn't want to go home because I didn't know if I was going to see the doctor. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde made him go to two different counselors and didn't make it to more than two sessions with each because he didn't need therapy. I decided to stop everything when I started to fall into depression due to constant stress. I am usually a very happy, positive person, and I became a walking pile of nerves. I couldn't shake the belief that someone who truly loved me would never treat me the way he did. Divorced for six months. Even though I get lonely sometimes, I still take loneliness a thousand times more than being with him again. Story six. I got it the second time, but the first time, I didn't. We didn't live together at first, a big mistake. He was able to hide his alcoholism from me, even though I knew and worked closely with him for three years before we started dating. After we got married, I tried to lease it. It was denied because it had three DNIs and a contributing to a minor charge. He said it was in his past and he had changed. Six months later, I was dusting the bookcase and found a bottle of alcohol tucked behind some books. And after further searching, I found five different bottles hidden throughout the apartment. We had a liquor cabinet, but he wanted to hide his habit. He said he would get help, but he didn't. One night he came home drunk and pushed me against the wall when I told him how reckless it was. I called the police. He was detained for the night. I hid his belongings in a box, downloaded the divorce papers, and told his father to bring him to the bank after I picked him up from the train station so we could split the account and get the papers notarized. He said, why are you overreacting to this? It's not like I hit you. And I said, why do you think I'm stupid enough to wait for you to do that? It was that. Story 7. Now in the divorce phase, when our daughter was a little over three months old, he was caught for taking prohibited photos of children. Edit. A lot of people are asking how I caught it. I didn't catch him. Law enforcement agencies did. There must have been hundreds of images videos of underage girls, age 7 and up, on our computer. Many people also ask me if he accidentally stumbled upon it. No, you can't just stumble across hundreds of images and videos and save them to your computer. Many people also assume that I broke up with him quickly because he didn't act on those impulses. I don't know if he ever acted on them. In my opinion, he did. The girls he saw in the videos and pictures are the victim. Participated in their exploitation. I can't look past it. Story 8. Every time I asked her, she came up with another excuse. She refused marriage counseling. She refused to talk about it in detail. They ranged from smart to petty. So, I don't know. I go with her seemed like she was too young and losing her party years. She could have figured it out earlier during our eight-year relationship so I could get some time back. Story 9. We got married too soon? 
It was Vegas where she was from, returned to New York, where I worked and she did nothing at all. She left around Christmas to see family in Vegas, came back about three weeks later. Then, a month later, right after the job interview, she told me she was leaving again to go to Virginia to help her poor aunt get back to Vegas. She comes there and blows 500 in two days, and then calls me to ask for money to gas up her aunt's car. I said hell no, and she didn't talk to me for two days. I finally tell her it's not working. We quickly break up in Vegas, and six months later she remarries. Story 10. Last week the husband asked for a divorce. Our first therapy session revealed that he wanted out fast. He says he doesn't know. I do not know. I have a busy job and my dad died six months ago, so I've been unpleasant. Who knows? I'm still shaking my head in disbelief. Wanted to split bills and bills. When I do that and it affects him negatively, he becomes poor. He said things like, society forced me to get married. You made me marry you. I don't know what I want, but I don't want you. Even if I left you tomorrow, I would still love you. It's been a fun week. Story 11. Easy answer, Steve. You see, Steve was the guy my ex knew in high school. That guy where there was always a spark of chemistry, but the timing was never right. He was the one who ran away. Years later, after we'd been married for a few years, she reconnected with some old friends and went to visit those old friends, including Steve. The old spark started flying, and the next thing you know, the missus is having an affair with Steve. She left me to be with him. They were kindred spirits, after all. Relinquished my true love after 14 years and two marriages, me and my wife and Steve and his. That's a simple answer. Blame it on Steve. The truth is, I shouldn't have gotten married at all. At least not to her. It was doomed from the start. And Steve was just a willing scapegoat. Story 12. My mom divorced my dad because he was caught with child on his laptop last September. She said it was the last straw for their marriage. They had been together for 31 years, and they always talked about doing things and going somewhere. But every time she planned something, he would say it sounded silly or not worth his time or he thought that they don't have the money for it, or they simply wouldn't do it, and the idea would be shut up. I am 20, and their divorce was finalized about two weeks ago. It hurts, man. Story 13. I worked with people with special needs, and my ex said the most disgusting, disgusting things about people with special needs to put me down and make fun of my career ambitions. It was then that he bothered to talk to me at all. He wanted a woman who would take care of him and his needs, but he cared very little about reciprocity. I didn't want to have children with him, and for the children to think that the way we live is acceptable. Story 14. My daughter once cried at night. She had a bad dream, and my husband told me to stay in bed and went to her. She was uncomfortable with him, so she cried for me. This escalated into him hitting her and yelling at her to stop crying. This woke her brother, who started crying and was also hit. Then he broke a chair in their room, because he stubbed his toe on the leg of the one where I rocked them at night and threatened to burn their new beds in the backyard if they didn't stop crying. They were five and three. He came into our bedroom where I was sitting scared and stunned, got dressed, told me to deal with it, and left. It was one o'clock in the morning. I didn't see him until the next night. I don't know where he went or what he was doing at that time. All I know is that that day I started packing and making plans, and nine months later I left. That night was the culmination of years of him lighting me up and neglecting his children. His parents told me it was the best decision I ever made, dot, 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 IT finally made him a real father. And not living with his mental problems was the best solution for me. He still struggles with parenting, but we are doing well now. We are friendly and focused on the best for the kids. Story 15. Would have spent 1200 on my car, but yelled at me for spending over 40 on groceries. This peach spent thousands of dollars on his car and bought himself lunch every day. Always made more money than I did, but never got my bills paid. I paid for everything because otherwise I would have come home with no electricity and no phone. Also, a lot of mental abuse. I figured if I had to pay for everything anyway, I wouldn't have to deal with mental abuse. It's been gone for three years now, and my mortgage is two months ahead, and my phone and electricity always have next month's credit. Story 16 the last straw for me was when I had to beg for selfless handiwork before bed on our fifth wedding anniversary. We became roommates instead of lovers. It worked for a while, but then she and I also became bad roommates for each other. She's a great mom and she thinks I'm a great dad, but we're both really terrible as a couple. No cheating? No financial problems? Just very different people who probably hit the marriage hook too quickly. We both just thought it would be the next step after we each graduated from college. The good news is that we are both polite and caring but not in a romantic way. My only regret is that my children will not have a traditional upbringing with two parents like I did. It made me respect my parents' loving 35-year marriage that much more. 
Story 17. I just realized that no matter what I do, he will never change. I let him walk all over me and cheat on me for years, and kept thinking that if I just did more, was more patient, a better wife, etc., he would have realized his mistakes. Example, he would cheat, I would catch him. A huge fight would break out. He would have manipulated me into this in some way because it was my fault that he did it. You don't love me enough. You'll never trust me again. You weren't intimate with me that time in 2006 and I felt rejected. Somehow I'll have to make it up to him and prove to him I trusted him. I would forgive him and work on being happier, kinder, more understanding, all the crap he fed me. And a few months later, I would just catch him again. The final straw was when he convinced me that he really had changed. He wanted to be a family, a whole package. Of course I got pregnant. It turned out to be high risk and I was hospitalized a lot. They are allowed to go home only if they observe bed rest. Even then he didn't stop running after me. I lost 45 pounds, my hair started falling out, I was too weak to even walk. My family thought I was dying. He didn't even care. So at one point I was sitting by myself and I just understood. I finished. He was never going to change. And it wasn't my fault. I couldn't fix what was broken in it, and I was done trying. It was six months after the baby was born, before the doctors cleared me to go back to work. I left spent several years alone, cursing with men. I am now with a fantastic man who loves me. The divorce is still going on. My ex tried a lot of bad tricks when he found out I was leaving. I laughed in his face to everyone. He does not understand this. At one point, I seriously thought I was going to die. I thought that my children would be left alone and only he would take care of them. After I went through that, nothing he could do could bother me. Sometime, it doesn't matter. This is my story. Hope this helps. Story 18. Late to the party and probably going to be buried, but I'd like to share. I'm active duty and my ex-husband was as a civilian. Many years ago, I went overseas on a remote trip for 15 months and he stayed in the U.S. with our 10-month-old baby. I called him to let him know I had been approved to come back for two weeks for an interim tour and he said he needed to call the utility company and get gas so I could have a hot shower when I got home. Me. Wait, you don't have hot water? Why? Example, it's expensive. Keep in mind the baby was 1.5 and it was a Midwest winter. Me, how does baby take a bath? Example, I just run the water and let it come to room temperature. Our heat was on gas. Our hot water was on gas. Our stove was gas. My child lived in a cold house and ate cold food. Taking room temperature baths, he had a decent paying job. I paid the rent and daycare bills. Plus, we had a joint bank account. There was no reason for my child to be without it. When I landed in the U.S., I went to the house to pick up my child, and he attacked me. Ran out of there with the child straight to a lawyer to file for divorce. I later learned that he had been arrested for possessing his girlfriend a couple of weeks prior to my visit. I don't know where my child was. The police report doesn't mention a child in the car. I spent my two weeks on my mom's couch, and my baby had to go back to the old house when I left. I finally got full custody after his neighbors found my four-year-old running and crying in the middle of the night trying to find her dad. His ex left him at home alone. The neighbors called the police and I got an emergency order. This took longer than I planned. Sorry, everyone. Thank you for reading. TL, DR, military, went overseas without ex and baby. Ex didn't think baby needed hot water. Story 19. We never stopped loving each other, but she could never communicate what she really wanted and then spent about a year completely hiding her feelings putting all the responsibility on me to fix everything without letting me know. When we broke up, she finally let me know what she really wanted and what she wanted to say but couldn't. But at the time, she was too committed to the divorce. The worst part was that she manipulated me into doing things for her before she told me she was leaving. Story 20. Will be divorced very soon. Met with lawyers. Three weeks ago on the day he lost it. He beat the cow out of me, strangled me, then pulled a gun on me. The front of our four-year-old. He has struggled with addiction to pain pills for the last few years, even going so far as to steal my meds. One time took one three of a bottle of Percocet 10S two days after it was filled. I didn't know for a week because I using a things planner. Tried to get help from him, he wouldn't, became more and more hostile. And I kept thinking things would get better, but they didn't. And that was the last straw. My son and I have been diagnosed with PTSD and I have VPO. I also moved across the country while he was still in custody. My mom bailed him out and then showed up at the house screaming that I probably set him off. I'm in a wheelchair. In any, in any case, yes. Done finished, I'm not asking for anything because I understood him. I will add that he lost his cow because he was going through withdrawal from not taking the pills because I have spent the last six months in terrible pain to get the temptation out of his hands. I didn't know he was getting them from the guy at work until he ended up in jail and I screwed up.
He has extremely dark brown eyes, and I could never tell if his pupils were constricted, but I believed he wasn't. He's just a loser, and I was stupid enough to give him a chance because love, edit, one word. Story 21, my drink. I'll leave the excuses for another day, but at the end of the day, depression and drinking, chicken and egg scenario, led to the end. She started seeing a therapist because I drove her crazy, and they advised her to give me an ultimatum that if I drank again, I would have to move out until I was three months sober. We had a two-year-old and a four-year-old at the time, and the alcoholism lasted for about three years. I drank again because I'm an alcoholic. I moved out and that's basically it. I had a rough few months but joined AA and enrolled in a seven-week rehab program. She started seeing someone else while I was in rehab. We have mostly come to terms with the fact that it was over when I went to rehab and that she will never be able to go back to where we once were. We sold our house, paid off our debts, and she used the money left over to buy a place for herself and the kids. Sobriety brought some sanity and I began to become an active parent. It started with taekwondo twice a week for my oldest son after kindergarten and building trust, which eventually led to sleepovers, weekends, homework help, and being a parent. Since we had already sorted out all of our assets and had developed mutual respect, we decided to file for divorce on our own. I live in Canada. We sat down at her kitchen table and discussed what would be best for all of us. We discussed the issues that were uncomfortable and made concrete plans for the future, including what would happen in the event of a relapse. We went to the courthouse, filed the paperwork, and paid $210 for processing. Then we left the courthouse and talked for a bit. We cried, we hugged, we wished each other the best, and then we said we'd talk later that night to decide who would work on a school project with our son. We have established healthy boundaries in our relationship and are able to spend time with each other as parents. We go to parent and teacher interviews together, plan birthday parties together, and even go to the odd movie together when the kids ask. I have been paying alimony since the beginning of the divorce. Happy ending. When I put my youngest to bed last night, he gave me a big hug and kiss and said, I love my family so much. Now sober for three years. Story 22. Married for 18 years. There are no children. No candy alcohol abuse cheating issues. We both gained weight over the years, but never suffers from obesity. She completely lost interest in close relationships, which gradually began about 10 years. About a year before we broke up, I remembered that it had been about six months since we had been intimate before. She told me I was a disgusting pervert. Sorry, I'm still attracted to her. She also told me she wasn't attracted to me anymore. This scrolling finished me. From the day I met her until the day I left her, I thought she was the most beautiful woman I had ever met. I wanted her every day. Seven years have passed since our divorce. I still miss her sometimes. I still think about her sometimes. She was my wife and my best friend. Story 23. He made three times as much as I did but could never explain why none of the bills were paid. I got a second job to try and cover them, and it just made him spend more money, and the bills were paid even less. When I said I absolutely couldn't do it again after a year, he told me he had no intention of doing anything else. Life would be like that. And my choice was to get on the train with him or not. I didn't. Story 24. She cheated on me from the very beginning of our relationship. She cheated on me after we had a son. She cheated on me when we finally got married. She cheated on the guy she cheated on me with. I finally filed for divorce after years of stupidity. The best decision in my life. Marriage is cheap. Divorce is expensive. Everyone should really consider this before asking questions. Story 25. I'm tired of the merry-go-round that our relationship has become. He would lie about something. Big bought a Dodge Viper while we were remodeling our house. Then he promised to change or not lie anymore. Everything changed for a short time and then he lied again. Due to the fact that he served in the Navy, we lived in spectacle states. He couldn't handle the distance and was sabotaging our relationship. He refused to participate in the divorce which ended up requiring me to subpoena the government to get his papers. And to this day, he refuses to talk to his family or admit that anything happened. Three years have passed. Story 26. I caught him looking at forbidden photos of boys. We were married for a year, both Muslims, and tried to have children but couldn't. Now I'm happy about that. We had an arranged marriage. I would say we were happy together, but he wasn't living his true self. He continued to deny that he was a boy, mainly due to cultural stigmas. We broke up five years ago. Two years later, I got married again and have two beautiful children. After the divorce, we lost contact, but I was interested and looked for him on social networks. I think he met someone with whom he travels everywhere. Maybe they're just friends, but I don't think so. I'm happy for him. Story 27. I got married for all the wrong reasons. 
My dad had just passed away a couple of years ago, and my mother and sister did an inexplicably epic act together later that year. I was left all alone. I was a mess. To cut a ridiculously long story short, I fell head over heels for the girl I worked with in the ripe old age of 19 years. She was smart, stubborn, and genetically incapable of giving up an argument. We became very good friends. If either of us had any sense, this would never have gone any further. But we were young and extremely stupid. Too much, I know. And one day she gave me an ultimatum. Either we were getting married or she was leaving me forever. She accidentally pushed a button my family had installed a few years ago. I was too big a cat to tell her to screw up, so I spent the next ten years married to her. Everything was not bad, not at all. We had a lot in common, a lot of common interests and curiosities. But in the end there was no love. There was no mutual respect. I was not attracted to her. I'm willing to bet that in the last three years of our marriage, we haven't been intimate more than ten times. I couldn't give her what she wanted in a relationship. I didn't want kids. I didn't like most of her family, with the notable exception of her younger brother, who she generally annoyed. And by the end, I was drinking a lot. I never got in trouble with the law or at work, but every day I came home, put on my headphones, and got drunk. She was unhappy with the amount of money I was making as a computer technician while she was raking in money nonstop at her real estate job during the bubble before the crash. She made fun of me for not pulling my weight. And when I got fired, it got even worse. She made her parents a big part of our lives. I received many lectures from her parents. Side note, her dad was known to leave the bathroom door open while he was taking the cow. Eventually, we both started cheating on each other. She was always the smarter half of the idiot couple, so she eventually filed for divorce. I was so retarded that I would probably forever remain unhappily married, drunk, broke, and unfaithful. She did me a huge favor by filing for divorce. Even though the details messed us both up, way more than she wanted the hell with the divorce. Divorce happened eight years ago, and I have to admit that even though they were the freaking armored vessels spreading leprosy, they were spreading leprosy. The divorce was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Edit a word or two. Story 28. The last drop was very specific to me. We were together and miserably poor for years, married because we had an unplanned child. All the time he was either unemployed or underemployed. He refused to live in the real world. For example, I told him we had to pay a fine for him, he refused, and then he got disqualified, and we had to pay $600, which was half our rent. Such a cow. Just dumb. Then he would state, well, now we know as if he had learned his lesson, but it would happen again. It had a lot of weight to keep it afloat. The last straw was that in the last year of our marriage, he found a better paying job. Instead of taking my advice and saving money for taxes, he rolled his eyes and told me to shut up many times. Well, I did our taxes that year and ended up owing $8,000 because he was an independent contractor and didn't plan it that way. $8,000 was about a third of my annual salary. I told him as soon as the taxes were ready that I wanted a divorce. As soon as he left, he suddenly found a well-paying job to support himself. As for me, I fell in love with being in complete control of my money. And since I wasn't so drained from being around him all the time, I got a better paying job and got a promotion went from making about $1.25K part-time up to $90,000 full-time for five years after divorce. If he had bothered to hire a lawyer, he would have been told that I could owe him child support under California law. Whoever earns more can be responsible for alimony. Story 29. When I sat outside my apartment after another long day at work and didn't want to go inside because I was worried he might have done something, and then felt relieved at the thought felt poor at the thought, and knew it was time to end it. He never worked in the five years we were together. He didn't take care of the apartment, and I worked two, three jobs to pay for everything. He would play video games for days and cry if he couldn't play. For four years of marriage, we did not have a close relationship. He was depressed and refused therapy. So this last poor thought of mine was the last straw, and I sent him packing. Story 30. My ex has always suffered from bipolar disorder. We married young. When I finished school, it stopped working. She wanted to be a writer. My income was enough for her to stay at home and write stories and poems. So that's what she did. Her depression became the first crack in the marriage. And it's not her fault. But the reality is that there were many days when it was hard to come home to the cloud of despair that was my ex. But I made a commitment and I loved her. So I just reminded myself that her depression was weighing on her way more than me and my muscles. Fast forward about 12 years, about four and a half years ago. I got a new job that still pays well enough for her to stay home. But for now, she has not written much for a long time. And she started smoking candy. It helps counteract some of the side effects of her medication. 
As a result of our new job, we are moving from our home in the city to some cookie-cutter suburb. Neither of us are happy with the location, but work is too far for me to commute. I try to make it the best I can. She starts smoking more candy and spends her days watching the same TV shows over and over again. I swear she must have seen every episode of Buffy and every episode of Stargate SG-1 at least 20 times. So living in suburban hell was crack number two. And the increasing amount of time she spent on damage was, quite frankly, crack number three. Two and a half years ago, I got a new boss who was, and probably still is, even though I haven't seen her in a year and a half, the bad person, nasty person, queen of the world. Working for her made my life miserable. I fell into depression, although I didn't know it at the time. My ex wanted me to go to therapy. I thought, what's the point? I have a poor boss. It's just life. What is the therapist going to tell me that I don't already know? Huge mistake in hindsight. I did end up going through therapy and learned a lot about perspective and being able to let go of silly things that would have helped me back then. Well, anyway, my depression was a crack. At the same time, I got my new boss. The incident happened. And if anything caused the divorce, it was the incident. Incident. My ex's best friend of 25 years, best friend before they call each other sisters, lives in another city. One night, around one o'clock in the morning, about a year before my marriage ended, I was traveling across the country on a business trip, and my ex and her best friend were chatting on Facebook. A best friend is something of a narcissistic sociopath, and so when my ex did something to piss off her friend, the friend decided to call our local police and say that my ex had gone to heaven. The police appeared, and while my ex was gone, they decided to drag her to the hospital. And I mean drag. My ex wouldn't go and was physically dragged out of the house, leaving bruises and scratches. Now, my ex's biggest fear has always been involuntary commitment, so this was like her nightmare come to life. Long story short, they release my ex in the morning when the next psychiatrist comes in and concludes that she is not in heaven, but the damage is already done. My ex has PTSD. I've fallen even deeper into my own depression with secondary PTSD, and we're headed for divorce. The rest goes pretty much as you'd expect. I shut down emotionally. She starts spending all her time on Facebook reconnecting with old boyfriends. We try to make it work for a year, by which I mean we ignore his problem and pretend it's not falling apart for a year, and then she decides to leave me to go live in a small town on the other side of the country where her high school boyfriend of life. That was last March, 18 months ago. By July, I was hoping for a reconciliation. I put a lot of effort into overcoming my depression, and by September I was fit and healthy and actually very grateful to be out of that marriage. I would never have gone on my own, but she did me a huge favor. Meanwhile, her boyfriend from high school wanted nothing to do with her, and as far as I can tell, she hasn't done anything to improve her life. On the contrary, last month she moved across the country to live with friend's psychiatrist sister who made a fake call to get her arrested. Go figure it out. The only time I hear from her is when there's some problem in her life that she thinks is my fault. Example. She took one of the cars when she was leaving. The registration expired back in June, and somehow it was my responsibility to register her car to her, even though she now lives in a completely different state than we live together. I received several angry emails and threats of legal action. Now I'm just waiting for the divorce to be final. It's dragging on for reasons I really can't understand. I've moved on with my life in every way but legal, and I'm long overdue for an official divorce. By the way, since you're asking this, since you're considering a divorce, I highly, highly, highly recommend counseling, both individual and couples counseling. And the people on our divorce are extremely friendly and supportive. Story 31. My first marriage fell apart when I found out she was going to go shopping and sleep with a policeman instead of working. One day I went to her place of work to surprise her, but no one had heard from her. I called her on her cell and she said she was with a client and don't disturb her at work. I addressed the issue when she got home and she was upset because she can't trust a person who is doing everything possible to spy on her. The next day, I went to work and came home to find her things gone and her gone. Oh, the joint bank account was cleared too. Days passed and I learned that we were in huge debt. She took out loans from our joint account and also had credit card debt. Marriage and joint ownership did not help either. A few weeks later, I come home to an eviction notice because she was late with her rent, despite going so far as to trick me with fake receipts. Add to that the local police chasing me. Numerous driving violations that I've walked over. Behind the wheel. Oh, and to see her driving together. I moved out of state and filed for divorce. She never responded to the court summons. So the divorce was filed under the divorce petition. I filed for bankruptcy and learned to always take care of my own finances. Story 32. On the 1st of May, she left me for her manager. 
She slept with him sometime in late April. My state has a mandatory separation period, so the divorce can be finalized in November. Recently found out that she is 10 weeks pregnant with his child. She's always had bipolar, but I thought we finally found a therapist who was a good mix of sweets and counseling. We got married a little young. I was 21 and she was 22. I think what finally led her to another man was that we had an argument about the children in February. She basically said that if we didn't have one by the time she turned 30, she turns 28 in December, then she wasn't going to try to have one. The argument was because one of our friends in medical school got pregnant and I was still making us wait for her to pay off her huge debt that I didn't know about until the wedding. We sat down and worked out a financial plan that would allow us to start having kids next year, but it was probably too soon for her. Story 33. We had problems for a while. She was very controlling and critical, which caused a lot of controversy. I developed depression, which I believe was exacerbated, if not caused, by our relationship. To be honest, I wanted to leave, but I felt I had to stay for the sake of the children. Our daughter was potty trained and out of diapers. One time she wet her panties three times in a row, so after the third time I decided there was no point in putting on new ones. She could be naked under the dress. It wasn't a punishment, it was just a way to reduce the washing. My wife got away and I yelled back and then went to bed to sulk and calm down. Ten minutes later, the police arrived and spoke to her, and then told me that based on what she told them, they could arrest me, but would instead let me off with a warning. The mail officer gave me the best advice I've ever received. I should leave now because if I get a police report, it will make it less likely that I'll have access to the kids after the inevitable breakup. I left the next day. She called almost every day for the next few months asking when I would be back. She couldn't understand why I left or that I left forever. When everything finally came to light, she went crazy again and started denying me access to one of our daughters. But that's another story. Story 34. Once I came home early and saw an unfamiliar truck on the driveway, I drove around the corner and texted her that I was going home. She answered that she was at the beach with her friends. Sure enough, I see her and some dude get into a truck and take off. I brought it up later and she said he was just a friend and didn't want me to think she was cheating. However, I later found her second phone hidden with a bunch of dirty messages to about seven other guys. We were only married for three months, turning over the worker. Story 35. I was young and very naive. I met a girl who was a single mother, and for some stupid reason I thought I could play the role of the hero. I married her, bought us cars and a house, and raised her little girl as my own. What I didn't realize was how difficult it would be, and that my wife had a lot of baggage. It wasn't like she was just some innocent women who got knocked up by the wrong dude. There was a reason why she was a single mother. A few years later, I found out that she was having an affair with a much younger man. Even though our relationship had been falling apart for a while, I still tried to win back her love during those first few weeks after my discovery. It's very easy to assume that if you were in this situation, you would head straight for the door. But the reality is always a little different than you imagine. Finally, after weeks of her running around with her toy boy and me staying home to watch her baby, I decided to leave town. I headed to Los Angeles, where a couple of good friends were trying to make a name for themselves. I spent a couple of weeks clearing my head at an event with friends. They were by no means successful, but they lived on their own terms. One of my friends told me that their door is always open for me if I want to leave. I went home, filed for divorce the next day, repossessed her car and sold it along with the house, and the day after the judge granted the divorce, I drove to Los Angeles, stuffing all my stuff into the back seat. It was 15 years ago. Since then, I have remarried wonderful women, have two wonderful children of my own, and still reside in Los Angeles. Looking back, so much pain and crap I went through dot 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 IT was worth it. After going through this experience, I became a 100 times better man. Story 36. We have been married for four years and have a son who will be two years old in September. After he was born, she started getting back in shape by hitting the gym every day. After a few months of training in the gym, she started to look better. She signed up for a new gym last December, and in February I moved. She worked from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., come home for 45 minutes to see me and our son, and then go to the gym for two hours, sometimes a little longer. I worked nights, so we hardly saw each other besides her time at the gym. Anyway, she appeared to be in love with her new gym trainer. She spent a lot of time with this new boyfriend, going to the park, taking her son to the gym so he could learn kickboxing. She had a son before us. She even lied to our nanny and didn't come home when she was supposed to and abandoned her grandmother who came over for dinner and abandoned her son. Hanging out with this guy, needless to say, this was the last straw. We have one more mediation appointment before the divorce papers are filed. I tried my best to save the marriage. 
but she didn't want to work on it. I even went to therapy, tried changing clothes, changed shifts, took days off to spend with her. After all, she just didn't want to be with me. So this is why we're breaking up. And at the end of the day, according to CA, I'm the bad guy and should pay and get 35% custody. Stupid state. Story 37. Went with my brother for the first time in many years. She thought I was staying at his house for the night. Come home, go into the bedroom and find her snuggled up to the basketball player. Both the smell of intimate relationships intoxicates our room. Our young children are sleeping in the next room. If it wasn't for them, I would have done something terrible. We were married for five years. Edit. This was a couple of years ago. She, 28, married a Marine who was 20. They had a wedding the day after our divorce was final. Story 38. We were a young Christian couple waiting for marriage. She hated intimacy, and I stayed in it for six years thinking she would learn to enjoy it. Maybe she would try once a month but she hated every moment of it. Finally, one night we went to Halloween at Universal Studios. Girls in bikinis were dancing at the entrance. I just thought I'm so turned on all the time and this woman I'm with will never even touch me intimately. We had to plan a week in advance, and that could only happen on Saturday morning. I just stewed as we walked through the park, wondering why I couldn't go home and be intimate with my wife. I was so angry. We were with a group and I was walking within 10 feet of them all night. I went home and fell asleep on the sofa. The next day, I called my friend and stayed at his place. I told her I would never come back. It was the best moment of my life, and every second of freedom after this hell was incredible. Now an atheist, and life is good. Story 39. Not divorced yet. I need to complete these documents. There's a saying that goes something like this. Find someone with demons. Play nice with yours. Well, ours didn't play together. And while I admit I did a lot wrong, I was trying to fix it, and I needed her help. She was a very negative person. They always said that something was wrong or bad in her life. Often it was about me and what I was doing or not doing. But even when it wasn't me, she was always looking for something wrong. And at the same time, she was critically dependent on me for almost everything. She couldn't sleep in the house alone without being scared. She couldn't drive long distances, etc. I couldn't go out with my friends or do my own thing because I couldn't leave her alone. She didn't let me. This combination made me depressed by taking away my motivation to do anything for her and constantly telling her bad things. Everything I did seemed to be wrong, so I started not doing anything for her because I knew she wouldn't like anything I tried. If I was going to be wrong, I decided it was easier to just make money doing nothing. Everything also had to be done in my own way, and if not, then it was a sign that I did not love her. It doesn't matter that my opinion has always been wrong as well. Every day was like walking on eggshells. I always wondered what her next outburst would be. When I finally heard my family's opinion, I realized that I didn't need to be with them. Our last fight was about the laundry, and the fact that I didn't fold it correctly and didn't remember which drawer was the right one meant that I didn't love it and that I didn't have a mind. I got so tired of her lashing out at me when things weren't perfect that I just packed some clothes, called my mom to pick me up. My car at the time was her grandmother's old car, so I felt, which should not use it and incite another battle, and our last argument was at the house we rented. The only thing that stuck in that conversation was on the subject of marriage counseling. Before we got married, our waiter suggested we get married, and even though I said yes, she said no. When I asked her about it, she said it was because she didn't think I was going to participate. Ironic considering one of my majors is psychology. It was September 28th last year. It's been almost a year, and I still have no doubt that she would take me back if I tried. But I won't. I'm done being some woman's punching bag. But as I said... These documents need to be drawn up. Story 40. I got married at 19, divorced two days after my 22nd birthday. He cheated on me twice and blamed it on weight gain and not having a job. I gained about 10 pounds, and we lived in a very small town where I couldn't find a job despite my best efforts. So we moved back to my hometown. He got a job. I got a job. But by then, we were so broke that he just woke up one day, called me while I was at work, and said he was leaving me. The day after Valentine's Day. Story 41. Together for five years, and married for a little over a year, I realized that she had never tried as hard as I had. Everything that went wrong was my fault, whether it was justified or not. She was very manipulative, so she made me believe her. Everything had to be like her, including me. She tried to change so many aspects of me that it caused me to be constantly angry and depressed. When she had a seizure and stayed at my aunt and uncle's to explain to me that my best friend started talking to me and told me what it was like from his point of view. That's when I met with a therapist who told me after about three sessions that I needed to ditch the fondant. So I did, story 42. She betrayed me. I begged her to stay, 
and we consulted and limped along for another year or so before she finally got up the courage to ask for a divorce. It broke me, but I will never be able to thank her enough for ending it. It broke me, but breaking me was the only way I could rebuild myself. I am now engaged to be married next spring, and I will never let anyone cheat on me again. Lessons learned the hard way, of course, but lessons learned nonetheless. Story 43. I was a small, insecure guy who never dated. She was a couple of years older, with a lot of mental issues, but she liked me, so I completely ignored all the warning signs. During my senior year in high school, she got pregnant. There was no way she was going with deprivation, and I was still in my, God, this girl wants to sleep with me, phase, and did not think rationally about many things. Soon we got married and had another child. After a few years, I came to my senses, realized that we were completely incompatible, and that I was deeply unhappy. I told her I wanted a divorce. After years of legal battles, I got full custody of our daughters and she pretty much disappeared from our lives. Story 44 His ex-wife was suspected of cheating when she moved out of town to take a job she really didn't need. She got her own apartment, and I had really bad feelings for a few months. Got off work early, I commuted nearby, and went to what I thought was a pajama party with my boyfriend and another friend. I was depressed but not sure of anything. Denial is powerful. The guy was unbearably, suspiciously nice to me. She confessed a few days later and said she wanted a divorce. We are actually on good terms now. We were never supposed to get married, even though it's not compatible. 1. Advice I wish I had received. Don't get married just because it seems normal, expected, or convenient. If your partner wants to, but you're not sure, then trust yourself. You are not required by law to marry before a certain age or at all. Don't do it if it doesn't work for both of you. Trust me, it's easier to say no sooner than later. Story 45 at first, she was very clingy, but suddenly went through a phase where she wanted to go dancing with her friends. I was all over it because I don't like dancing and I'd rather stay home with the kids. One weekend, I found a babysitter so I could surprise her at a club she said they were going to. I went there and she wasn't there. I waited until she got home and she swore she was there. I showed her the bracelet they gave me and she still insisted it was there. I understand that she was having an affair and I could understand that. But keep lying. I can't move on from this. Story 46 she had psychiatric problems that were getting worse. She was in and out of the psychiatric ward. She wasn't overtly crazy most of the time. Mostly it was just depression, interspersed with mild psychotic episodes. Being around her was just starting to weigh me down because there was nothing I could do. She was gaining weight and I found her less and less attractive. I ended up saying some really bad things venting because I couldn't talk to her without depressing her in a forum like this and she found it. Well, that was pretty much it. What I said could not be taken back. Story 47 was willing to try to salvage it by consulting after he found out she cheated. Found a message for her boss, he gave her the key to his community gate, and they had cute little nicknames for each other. But she did not want to engage in counseling. About a day after she tried to run me over with her mother's car, currently divorcing, so far we have taken about a year, and the next court date is five days after my birthday. Sigh. Story 48. When I was working full-time in side gig, with three hours of commuting every day, and he had a gig part-time job, and he didn't want to talk about getting another part-time job to help cover our expenses, help with housework. He spent all day at home with only two-hour sessions at night. His money was his, and my money was ours. I paid all the bills, and he had no interest in getting a real job. His dragged out, you can make over $1.50K a year as a karate instructor. Washer. Surprisingly, that's not quite the case, as he wasn't interested in a partnership, just someone to be his mother. I consolidated his debts and arranged payment directly from his employer, as he was getting more and more in debt every year and more before we got together. I didn't want his debt to be mine. I tried to talk to him about us and everything, several times over the last year. He didn't want to talk about it. The killer was when my brother and I were looking to buy a house. My then-husband expected his name to be on the mortgage, despite the fact that he couldn't put down any money for a deposit, any current payments, or any bills related to the house.